What's up, YouTube? So, in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Miami Dolphins defense um, versus the Jets. Obviously, a really hard loss. I mean, as you can see, 14, I mean, 40 to 17. Um, defense played pretty bad. I think we know that. Um, even with the injuries and stuff. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so we're looking at a cover three, it looks like. Yeah. We are starting to play a little bit more zone. Real quick, um, are the stats up? Yeah, okay. Let's look at the uh, Jets stats. Uh, Zach Wilson, 14 for 21, 210 yards, no touchdowns. Um, Brees Hall, obviously, had a pretty good game against his 18 carries for 97 yards and a touchdown. Michael Carter, he got two touchdowns. Uh, Braxton Berrios and Zach Wilson both got some rushing touchdowns as well. Brees Hall also had two big receptions. Um, so, pretty pretty rough on our part. Let's, um, let's get into it. All right, man-to-man -man coverage. No real... Eh. Almost swatted it down, but not really generating any pass rush. And like I've said, our defense doesn't really get very good pass rush unless we sell our soul for it. Because our guys don't really win their one-on-one -on -one matchups. Most of our pass rush comes from blitzing. That was a good job there, though. Bet Jalen Phillips. Stick to tight end. Play with some control. Go wrap up the running back. I like that. Playing some man. Rushing three. All right. Good job there. Confusing um, Zach Wilson. All right. In here, okay. Hand it to Michael. Uh, no, nope. play action. All right, what happened there? So we're in man. Yeah, he kept going too long. Actually, I actually felt like the disguise cover three. Let me look at the other corner. Yeah. Okay. So he found the hole in the zone then. Hopefully we'll have Xavier Howard back next week. That'd be nice. Man to man. Just going to hand it off to Michael Carter. Lana Roberts had a shot at him. Couldn't get hold of him. Definitely should have wrapped him up there. But good job rallying to it. And that is that I mean, I'm beating a dead horse at this point, but our tackling has been horrible. That's a good one there though. And that is the exception. Uh, Cater has been tackling very well. He's been the exception. Or at least a exception. Right, let's take a look at the, uh, the sack here. All right. We've got a total of six line, uh, six people on the line. Initially, everybody's coming. Jerome Baker's the one that gets it. Now he just has a running back to contend with. Okay, that's cool. But let's take a look at Jalen Phillips against Elijah Vera Tucker right here. Got his hands inside. 
Actually, the center kind of pushed Jalen Phillips in the correct direction to help him get away from Elijah Bear Tucker. That's interesting. But good job extending there. Great contact balance. And Melvin Ingram is also beats the tight end. Tackle just misses. Centers out of position. Okay. Center kind of fucked that up altogether. Let's take a look at this field goal drive. little slow there to react that's another thing too is when we when we do play zone our guys aren't really that good at it because they they react pretty slowly you can tell that we're supposed to be a man team good job there Good job squeezing. That's Jalen Phillips. Yeah. Um, the guys at University of Miami, they teach that. Uh, they teach that pretty well. They teach all their edge rushers to squeeze. I remember when um, Jalen Phillips was coming out. Um, him, Quincy Roche, and uh, Greg Russo. That that was all something that they shared. Um, I had different opinions on all three of them, um, but that was one thing that was consistent with all three. Good throw. Once again, though. Find the soft spot in the zone. And that's the thing. Zone coverage is pretty tough. Because I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm at this point where I'm happy that we're not just doing man-to-man -man coverage. We're not blitzing all the time. Um, but at the same time, it, it's hard for us to do zone because we can't get any pass rush with just our defensive linemen. We're just not capable of it because our guys, like I said, they just don't uh, win their one-on-one -on -one blocks very often. And if you don't have pass rush against and, and you're running zone, any competent quarterback is going to pick that zone apart because fundamentally – Every zone has its weaknesses. You know, cover two, you're probably going to want to attack up the middle, um, probably deep, unless it's a Tampa two, which is more common now. Uh, but you can hit them more underneath in, in the middle. You know, cover three, you kind of want to attack the flats, and so on. Because we're running cover three right here. Once this linebacker stops, this safety is drifting. If you know this receiver or this receiver goes out to the flat, that's a lot of ground, and the safety's going already in the wrong direction with his momentum. And like I said, any competent quarterback is going to know these things. Like the second he sees it's cover three, he should know um, where the ball needs to go based on, you know, where his receivers are going. Also, the penalties, man. That That's another thing. Our defense has been getting penalized like crazy. And I realize some of it is, is kind of whack, but we are also showing some pretty undisciplined play. Um, the face masks and, and, and shit like that. And, and that just goes to what I was saying about us not tackling very well. That's what that's a result of. I think Josh Boyer, I don't know if I'm necessarily ready to fire him right now, early, this early into the season, but I don't know if I would let him be our guy next year. 
we'll see. He has the rest of the season to improve. But the last few years, our defense has started very slow. And this year, it's just awful. Even though the players haven't changed. It's still most of the same guys. I know we have a lot of injuries, but still. So I kind of pointed it out with, with uh, cover three earlier, but this is, a, this is more of a Tampa two. Um, our safeties are dropping back here and here, and Jerome Baker is, uh, is dropping back here. Because traditional cover two, you'd have all three linebackers right here and both your safeties deep. Um, but again, competent quarterbacks realize, well, if, all, if the linebackers are here, the safeties are here, then this whole five yards is wide open for you. So that's why, you know, when the Tampa 2 came around, they, they dropped a middle linebacker back um, to kind of take that away. But once you get past that linebacker, it's very exploitable. And also, uh, the deep corner routes are, are there too. because Especially if you do, because you can set this safety up um, if you want it to. So... What you have to do first is you have to make this safety be in a position where no matter what, he's wrong. And the way you do that is by running one receiver toward the middle of the field and another in like a corner route. And that's going to make it where the safety can only choose to go one of two ways. Because this corner is going to guard the flat every time. So if he goes toward the middle where his help is, then the, cor then the corner is going to be wide open. If he goes to the corner, then the middle will be open. So. And like I said, if, if we're not getting any pass rush, because look at this. Like, we eventually get there. And I think that's Jalen Phillips. But one, two, three, four. And at the, almost the five-second mark is when we were finally starting getting starting to get pass rush. But before that, he had a completely clean pocket. I mean, luckily, he didn't see it because... And he didn't really have the routes necessary. But still. All right, so now we're in man. Well, it looked like it was man. What the fuck happened here? Yeah, it is man. So, this receiver is going to go toward the middle of the field, which takes Nick Needham away. Uh, Melvin Ingram is a read, meaning that they're, I don't think they were going to block him, but we do drop him back into coverage. One of these linebackers was supposed to go with Brees Hall. 100%. That's what happens here. Actually, I think this is, I think that's Eric Rowe. I know this is Eric Rowe, but I think that's his assignment. But I think this was a miscommunication because I think, uh... I can't tell who this guy is, but I think he thought Eric Rowe was going to take the running back, and I think Eric Rowe thought he was going to take him. And as a result, no one guards him. And good God, can we tackle, please? That's some pretty nice play design. And this is something you can do when you have two really good running backs. Brees Hall and Michael Carter are both very good. Uh, you get Brees Hall in motion, who just had that big run. That's going to you know, pull Javon Holland and some of the other defenders away. And that makes this easy. So, But it's all set up by a blown coverage and a miscommunication.
All right, we're looking at man, single high safety. Play action. Good job pressuring him. It's a little nuanced thing, too. Good job by uh, Jerome Baker there. But this is something I do like from Melvin Ingram. He doesn't just blindly rush after him. He doesn't just pin his ear back, his ears back and go. Because if he did that, he probably would have, would have ended up falling on his face and would have given Zach Wilson some room. And there's a lot of room there for him to run, potentially. But uh, instead, he reestablishes himself so he can contain him. And good job, Jerome Baker, just winding with that dude. That was strange. All right, we got a single high. Looks like man. Yeah. Nope. Gonna bail. It was they were about to bail into cover three, but there's a flag. Good job there, that Melvin. All right, let's let's take a look at the uh, other angle for this play. Perfect. Let me get it from the defense's perspective too. That's Zach Sealy that blew that shit up. Look at that. Good ball, get off, slap the hands away, you're gone. And now this is taking both offensive linemen away, so that allows Melvin Ingram to run free. That's just good ball, get off. Good job uh, predicting the snap count, too. Right. This is the same play. Indeed. Not that I mind watching it again. I like Zach a lot. This was interesting too, because it was they had to go so far. We three we got seven people just line up right there on the first down marker. <laughs> it's hilarious. Rush three. I do kind of like the idea, though, if you're going to rush three, rush two of them from the same side instead of, you know, having one guy over the center. Just try to overwhelm one side and let the other guy play contain. I do kind of like that idea. Especially in those situations where, you know, you are going to you know they're trying to throw deep. That'd be good for like Hail Mary situations too. Although really Hail Mary situations, you probably just let them throw. Just keep people back. Good job there. Someone blew that shit up. Landon Roberts. Landon Roberts absolutely blew that shit up. Anytime Landon Roberts just has to run forward, he's great. He's supposed to be playing Sam linebacker in a 4-3. That's really what his fit is. All right, single high man-to-man. -man. That's a good catch. Makes a decent coverage, but... Because that is a uh, man-beating route. Like, that's what it's there for.
that Melvin, I can't tell who that is. Could have had him, though, in the backfield. All right, single high man-to-man. -man. Another missed tackle. Landon Roberts. Some pretty bad tackle angles, too. Another one. And we're also not really reading our keys very well. The fact that we still got three guys all the way on the other side, they're not sprinting over here. We did, he has missed. What the fuck? I don't even know if I'm going to watch this whole game here for this film session because it's the same story. Like, I've been complaining about the same things the whole time. And the pass rush thing even goes back to last year. I was I was complaining about that last year, too. Like, even when our defense was playing well, the thing I was concerned about is the fact that we can't get any pass rush at all um, when we're not blitzing. And, obviously, and, you know, we're seeing this year the consequences of blitzing all the time. And I don't care, and unless you have like a Hall of Fame, and even then, really, like even if you have an all-time great defense, if you're just sitting there playing zone and you're not getting pass rush, you're going to be in for a long day. And this is against Zach Wilson. Once you start playing some of these veteran quarterbacks, you're going to be in trouble. Like we got to play Aaron Rodgers later this year. You think he doesn't know how to beat cover two? Think he hasn't seen cover two before? Very concerning. Good job stopping the run there. And the thing is, when, when they run toward the middle, we do plug our, our gaps well because our defensive linemen are very good. Raekwon Davis, uh, Christian Wilkins, uh, John Jenkins, Zach Sealer, they're all very, very talented players. So, you know, when they run up the middle, for the most part, we'll do pretty good because we'll maintain our gaps. But when they run to the outside, if they get past our edge rushers, we're in trouble because we can't tackle. Atlanta Roberts kind of sucks. Atlanta Roberts, like he, like we seen before, if he's just blitzing and he can just run forward and blow a play up, he's very good at that. But anytime he has to go side to side, it's a no go. Anytime he actually has to read anything or anything like that, if he has to go into coverage, And it used to be like, you know, we used to still rely on Orlando Roberts because at least he could tackle, but that's not even the case right now. And a lot of it is because he doesn't read his keys very well, and a lot of times the angle he takes makes it a very difficult tackle to make. Well, 
Like, look at this. This Landon Roberts right here? Believe so. He runs straight into this block. At this point, he's not even filling this gap. Because if he was filling this gap, he would have stopped instead of just trying to blow up the fullback. Because I know some people might be thinking, you know, he, he, he's trying to stop back, the, the, he's trying to stop this cutback lane, and he's hoping someone else will stop him to the outside. Because you typically are trained to defend the inside first. But he's he's not even really doing that. He's just bull rushing into the fullback. And he's been in the league way too long to be doing shit like that. And it's not just him. I know it might sound like I'm picking on him, but... It's not like I haven't been saying this stuff before. And when we had signed Landon Roberts, oh, and I, I was kind of happy we did because he's a captain on this team, I thought we would be like some getting a replacement for him somewhere down the line. I thought he was going to be a depth guy. I thought he was going to be a depth guy and a good locker room presence. I thought that was what his purpose was. I didn't think he'd be a starter this year. Single high man to man. Good job there. Again, though, like, I'm harping on the same points every week with this defense. Like, when they run up the middle, we're very good at controlling our gaps. Like, we're very good at, you know, defeating that. Um, but the outside runs where we really have to tackle and take good angles, we, we, we struggle. Especially if they really go outside. Because, like, Emmanuel Ogba um, and, and uh, Jalen Phillips are pretty good at uh, squeezing close to the tackle to, you know, secure the edge. But if they go past that or, if, you know, if, if they give help on that side... Looking at the Dolphins' offense now. Yeah. Watch a couple more plays. I'm not. I'm not going to do this whole game because, like I said, bro, I'm talking about the same things now. Single high, man to man. Like, it's to the point where if we get pass rush, we have to blitz to the point where someone's just running free. No one can beat anybody. They're not even getting past tight ends and shit. At least not in time. And our coverage isn't great either. We're not playing very physical with our coverage. Even when we're pressing, we don't play that physical. Alright, so this is what I was talking about before. When I said that... Uh, Landon Roberts wasn't really controlling his gap because he had just ran into the guy. Look at Jerome Baker here. He's actually stopping his feet. You know, he's actually controlling that gap rather than just crashing into this guy for no reason. Good job there. He run free? I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, it's it's Brandon Jones, yeah. And that's why, you know, a lot of our sacks do come from our DBs because they're not expecting DBs to blitz. So they end up, you know, going unblocked. And I'm, that's not discrediting Brandon Jones. 
I'm not expecting him to have crazy pass rush moves. And ultimately, a sack is a sack. But I just hate that we have to sell our soul to get some pass rush. And like I've been saying in previous weeks, I'm not necessarily saying that we should stop blitzing because that is, you know, the, you know, the, the foundation of the defense is that we are an aggressive unit. And I'm okay with that. But I would like to look a little bit at the Bills defense or the Bengals defense where, you know, they're, they're comfortable blitzing with just four down linemen and getting pass rush and then just add some blitzes in. I think I made my point. Um... Because like I said, I'm just harping on the same things now. So, Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, appreciate hitting that like button. Have any questions or comments in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.